all this is dr mobin sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show so the discussion today is the bivalent booster vaccine efficacy so when the bivalent was authorized at that time there was no efficacy data which was worth mentioning most of that was antibody titer levels so here for the first time there is some data that is interesting there are many questions with that data as well however it is important for us to see what that data is so so let's start this is drbean.com in the description of this video there is a link that gives you access to another 900 premium dr bean lectures at a very reasonable cost this is the study effectiveness of bivalent mrna vaccine in preventing symptomatic sars-cov-2 infection increasing community access to testing program united states september to november 2022 and it is published here on december 2 2022 so let's start the discussion and uh, because i'm recording this you will not see my face for the remaining part of the discussion please bear with me so these are the gifts for humanity they are continuing we'll have a pondering scientist today so we'll see once we reach there here is the data so first of all this is only for symptomatic infection it is not for the severe outcome or or sadly if anybody died from the uh, who had had the vaccine so that data severity icu deaths are not included just the symptomatic infection so the study structure is such that what they did was from september 14 to november 11th 2022 this year last month they had data from 18 plus individuals who were tested at the retail pharmacy outlets for covid they had covid symptoms and they were tested so there were 360626 tests given out and the retail locations were 9995 so these individuals and their data was used to see if they were vaccinated or if they were unvaccinated if they were vaccinated what was their age sex and or gender and then also if they had monovalent boosters and how many boosters so this is a kind of data that was used to put this study together and again this is september to november uh, 2022 so most of the infections in the us at this time were ba4 and 5 so here are the results they did two kinds of studies or data observation number one was what they called it absolute vaccine efficacy here they compared the vaccinated to unvaccinated and then they did a relative vaccine efficacy where they compared the vaccine efficacy after bivalent booster to vaccine efficacy of the bivalent booster to those who already had monovalent boosters or primary series as well so first of all let's look at the absolute vaccine efficacy of the bivalent booster so here what they did was they had unvaccinated individuals and they had bivalent booster receivers and they stratified them in various age groups now also remember they were all immunocompetent none of them was immunocompromised so here is the efficacy 18 to 49 years of age efficacy was 43% that is they were 43% less likely 
the more bivalent booster takers, 43% less likely to contract COVID symptomatic infection. We're not talking about asymptomatic, and so that is not measured. Only symptomatic, 43% less likely at age range 18 to 49. From 50 to 64, the range in which I fall as well, the absolute vaccine efficacy was 28%. Remember, originally, the efficacy was supposed to be, for authorization, was supposed to be more than 60%. So here, the bivalent booster had the efficacy of 28% in the absolute efficacy that is comparing to unvaccinated. 65 plus, 22%. So as the age increased, the efficacy dropped. And again, we are not talking about immunocompromised patients. These were immunocompetent individuals. Now, so this was the absolute efficacy. In all cases, bivalence efficacy was lesser than originally approved Delta vaccines efficacy against Delta. Remember, the efficacies used to be reported at 93%, 90%, and so on. Here, this vaccine is actually targeting Omicron. Even then, the efficacy is 43% or 28% or 22%, depending upon the age. Then, the second thing that they did was they wanted to understand the relative vaccine efficacy. What is that? So let's look at that concept first. Imagine that somebody is vaccinated. They have one or two or three monovalent booster doses. Now we know, so imagine this blue line is that. We know that as the dose is given, soon after that, there will be an increase in number of antibodies, the titer of antibodies. Then we also know that antibo antibodies will start waning. Correct? And within two months, they will start waning. So the relative vaccine efficacy is that an individual that had had the vaccine, then they were given the bivalent booster as well. And the measurement was how much uptick was created on the original protection. So, for example, I'll give you an example here. Let's say at this point, this is three months after the booster, maybe monovalent booster, one booster or two or three. Actually, it didn't matter how many boosters were there. So, let's say after three months, the efficacy has dropped to 20%. And that is actually the correct number for 50 plus age. After three months, or at three months, the efficacy drops to 20%. Now, these individuals, when given the booster, bivalent booster, then the bivalent booster collectively brings the efficacy to 50%. So that means an addition of 30%. So this is the relative vaccine efficacy. And what they did was they looked at various time frames. What I have presented here is after three months and after eight months. You can suspect that at eight months, the previous booster's efficacy is almost gone. Now, this is an open question that the efficacy against severe COVID is that still present or not. And there are some studies that show that efficacy stays against severe infection even after many, many months. Okay, so now let's look at the data with this concept. The data is after three months of a previous booster, so somebody who had the primary vaccine series, then they had one or two or three boosters. Now they have three months into it there is some waning, waning of the vaccine, and then they got bivalent booster. If their age was between 18 to 49, then on average, 
relative ex efficacy was produced, but there was 30% more addition to whatever efficacy was already present. 50 to 64 years of age, 31%. And here, this is a correct number that 50 plus years of age, after three months of a booster, the efficacy is actually left at about 20%. So 20 plus 31, total 51%. 65 plus after three months of their previous booster, whatever the efficacy they had, add another 28% to that. After eight months, and if you look here, after eight months, previous booster's efficacy is almost gone. So they didn't say what was the efficacy, they simply said whatever was the efficacy, I would say really low against symptomatic infections. So then if you see the efficacy of the booster has improved 56%, 48%, 43%. Why is that? It is just very simple. Their previous vaccine's efficacy has gone down. So relatively new efficacy that is produced by the booster is still 40-50%. So if the previous vaccine efficacy was left to be 10% or 1%, and then the overall efficacy was brought to 50%, so then all of that efficacy is attributable to the booster. So it's really not that the booster becomes better over time, but it is actually the previous booster's efficacy has gone down, so this booster's efficacy is shown. That means... Whenever the booster is taken, overall efficacy does not go above 50-60%. If previous booster had given 30% efficacy, then there is an additional 30%. If previous booster's efficacy was left at 10%, then there is an additional 50%. But overall, about 60% efficacy was maintained. This is the data. So I think you may be thinking that what what do I make of this data? And that is correct. And we'll do some pondering as well. I wanted to present the data. I also want to share some of the other doctor's comments. So this is a comment in CNN. I read about this one. This is John Moore, an immunologist and microbiologist as at Weill Cornell Medicine, said it boils down to the fact that that boosters will probably cut your risk, will probably cut your risk of getting sick by about 50% and that protection probably won't last. Now, if you see here in this study, there is actually no knowledge of how long because the study just finished in November. So at most, they can probably see them in December, but January, February, what will happen, we don't know. So probably won't last. That is based on the previous boosters. Having a booster will give you some additional protection against infection for a short term, which is always what we see with a booster. But it won't last long, it will decline, and it will decline more as the more resistant variants spread, said Moore, who was not invo involved in the new research. So continuing with the ponderance. I'll see if I can actually show <laughs> my face as well during this ponderance. So here, I hope you like this pondering scientist. So the questions to ponder are, number one, what happens to the ch chances of long COVID? So 50% protection. So that means other 50% who had the bivalent vaccine still didn't have much protection what happens to them for long covid and what happens to these who are protected for long covid after a few months if they get infected so long covid numbers are not there and i suspect for another few months these will not be present available severe covid and death that is also not there duration of protection of course we do not know that either Given the previous booster's record, it may be two to three months, but we don't know yet. 
immunocompromised and the status of boosters for them, which I think is more important than immunocompetent. So what happens in the immunocompromised, that is very important. So that data is not there. Then overall risk benefit analysis. That what is the risk that we are trying to avert with this benefit? So what is that risk benefit analysis? That is not there. So then one more comment from one more doctor. This protection is not 100%, but it is something Link Gellis said, I think she was part of the research, especially going into the holidays where we are likely to be traveling, spending time with elderly relatives, with vulnerable people. I think having some protection from infection and therefore some protection from inf infecting your loved one is better than having no protection at all. So I think this, this one statement makes me not entirely comfortable because we have seen that even asymptomatic folks can spread, infected folks can spread, um, vaccinated folks can spread. So that is not a huge lot of protection there. Link Gellis says it also means that people should continue to adopt a layered approach to protection utilizing rapid tests, good quality masks and ventilation as comprehensive approach rather than relying on vaccine alone. And you know what I found to be the most helpful was the nasal spray for me. It may not be for you, it may not be for everyone, but for me, povidone iodine 1% nasal spray was very, very helpful throughout the previous few months. So this is the discussion. This is the efficacy. If you are left with some questions as well, then please write them down. I'll see if I can do some research and find the answers to them. But generally, I am left with the answer the, with the questions. The basic idea that from anywhere from 22% to 50% is the efficacy, which is just a very low efficacy. Duration is not known immunocompromised, what happens to them is not known. And so uh, long COVID protection is not known. Severe status protection is not known. So we'll see more data in the future. Thank you very much and talk to you later.